<laughs> On Monday, Ukrainian civilians continued to flee Russian shelling in Irpin, north of Kiev. Several were killed doing just this on Sunday, but they had no choice, as no one here believes talk of humanitarian corridors. Yesterday there was the the hardest bombing, and like you know the lights and the sound is so scary, and the whole building is shaking. And I and my children we were sitting like half of night in the doorway because it's like the safest place. And I decided that it's enough. To the east, the shelling of Kharkiv is reducing much of the city to rubble. This is the university building. The majority living here are Russian. The local hospital is filled with civilian victims whose homes have been hit. It was a blast wave. There was an explosion somewhere nearby. The entire wall and windows collapsed in the kitchen. In those parts of Ukraine now under Russian control, local civilians are showing their defiance. This is Chaplinka near Kherson. Hundreds confronted Russian troops on the outskirts of town. They are not welcome. On the Polish border, refugees wait in freezing conditions for buses to take them deeper into Europe and further away from their homeland. They are mostly women and children. EU leaders say five million could come. In Kiev, President Zelensky urged the West to ban imports of Russian oil and again pleaded for a no-fly zone. He's unlikely to get either. We are waiting for a decision to clear the skies, either with the force you have or you will give us combat jets and air defense systems, which will give us the necessary force. On Monday afternoon, Russian and Ukrainian delegations met for another round of talks. The Kremlin said it would stop its attack if Ukraine makes constitutional changes so it cannot join NATO. It also wants Ukraine to recognize Russia's occupation of Crimea and its breakaway enclaves. It's still too much for Kiev, but it's less than the complete takeover President Putin said he wanted last week. In The Hague, Ukraine started proceedings against Russia at the UN's International Court of Justice. It accuses Russia of abusing the term genocide as an excuse for its attack. The Russians didn't show up. The fact that Russia's seats are empty speaks loudly. They are not here in this court of law. They are on a battlefield, waging aggressive war against my country. This is how Russia solves disputes. Western solidarity and support of Ukraine is holding up, but the economic implications are becoming clear. Oil and gas prices are soaring, and markets feel a recession is coming. It would be even worse if European countries stopped importing Russian gas and oil, something they're still doing every day. Simon McGregor Wood, TRT World.